Ready to go. The Buckeyes of Ohio State won the flip, and they said, we want the football. And that means that Pat Moons, the man who takes over here for his suspended teammates, will kick off to start this game. Telling Pat O'Brien that he's waited a long time for his opportunity, and Bo Schembechler gave it to him yesterday. We were in Bo's office when he made that tough but courageous decision yesterday, saying no one violates the rules on this team. And now it is up to Moons to handle the kicking chores. And the deep men, Vince Workman, standing back there with John Woolridge, number 25, who has been playing the last few weeks despite painfully injured ribs. Ohio State and Michigan are underway. Woolridge at the seven. Breaks free at the 25, the 30, the 35. And Moons, the kicker, finally gets him out of bounds near the 45-yard line. A 34-yard return, Coach. Excellent return, but there was a missed tackle on the play that made the difference. You'll see right here as he comes up, I cannot see quite the number, number 15. That's Arnold, a good, big play man for him. And he's finally brought down by the kicker, as Brent has pointed out. Now, attacking today for Ohio State. Jim Carsotos, of course, will be the quarterback, and Keith Byers, he will start the game. They will find out early if that foot will hold up here in Ann Arbor. On first down, it's the fullback, Cooper, and Billy Harris, the nose guard, brought him down. Now let's take a look at the men Carsotos will attack with. Right behind him, the big, young, talented fullback, George Cooper. And, of course, last year's All-American, Keith Byers, who's had such a disappointing senior season. Mike Lanise, who made the great catch in Columbus. Chris Carter, the spectacular young receiver, and the tight end, Ed Taggart, with the toughest defense in the land, awaiting Parsados in second and eight. The pitch in Byers, first carry. They stretch him out. He turns up field, gets across the 45. Brad Cochran brings him down. Jeff Akers, 33, over there to assist on it. Here comes Byers. I was impressed with him. I didn't think he'd be able to cut, but he showed great speed. He puts a little move on right here. He said he could himself all right. You saw the little move there. The foot looked like, looks like it's going to be all right. Brad Cochran finally got him down, but he took a shot before he did it. It is the first third down situation of the game. Play fake, Carsados, and it was, and it, there's a penalty marker down. There is a penalty flag down on the play. Mike Mallory picked the pass off, and the penalty is going to be against Ohio State. So obviously, Michigan would keep the ball in that situation. We've had our first turnover. Seems to be some discussion there as to we'll get it. We'll get it in here in a minute, I guess. The preliminary sign was holding against the Buckeyes. So it is. It is a turnover. This is what I talked about. Key plays on third down and short and goal line. Carsadis is right there. Watch Mallory, number 42, step right inside of Byers and make a great interception. Tom Tupa punting. Iowa running up off on Minnesota. We'll get an update on that in a moment. Tom Tupa is set to punt. Era, he must not have had control of that ball. His back was to us, and apparently the ball hit the ground, and that, that must have been what all the discussion was about. Gilvani Johnson. And there was movement in that line, so both teams a little bit uneasy here at the early going. 
I think Ohio State moved, and the response was by Michigan after the offensive lineman moved. No, they call it the other way. is a critical penalty giving a first I was under the impression, excuse me Brent I was under the impression here that Ohio State moved no the Ohio State man responded to the movement good call by the officials yep. it'll be first and ten for the Buckeyes well that's one way to get a first down you can't do it on short yardage Carsados, who jumped back down on it. Last week, they had an exchange problem, which contributed to one of their three costly turnovers against Wisconsin in that 12-7 upset. Carsados pulling away last week, and Mags did not deliver the ball. This week, Carsados appeared to have possession from the center snap, just fumbled it, and then recovered it. But it'll be second down and 11 yards to go for the Buckeyes. sloppy start we've had to this game. And while they try to sort things out, let's get an update on that Minnesota game. Brent, you've seen Chuck Long do this before this season. Third and four from the goal. Goal line, great fake to Harmon. Mike Flags in the back of the end zone. Chuck Long has now thrown for 10,000 yards in his career. It looks like he's going to Pasadena, Brent. Let's go back to Brent Nero. Indeed, Pat, and that would send the Hawkeyes to the Rose Bowl. And, of course, here, Ohio State needs a win to get into the Cotton Bowl. Michigan already committed to the Fiesta Bowl. And, Coach, what was that penalty? Well, again, it seems that they're a little tight. They're not playing relaxed and with great confidence. There's been exchange problems, offside problems. They've got to settle down. They're really keyed up. Both teams keyed up for this football game. And with the penalty assessed the Buckeyes, this is second and 17. Moeller showed blitz back down. Carsados under pressure. Safety valve Cooper. Cooper to midfield. Akers and Moeller wrestle him down there. Now here is the offensive line starting today for the Buckeyes. Rory Graves coming back from the one game suspension. He works next to Jeff Uhlenhaek. And at center is Bob Maggs, one of the better ones in the country. And at right side, Jim Gilmore and Larry Cotterman. And that's the side that they will choose when they need a first down. Frequently, they will run behind Gilmore and Cotterman. This is third and 12. attempts of Carsada's tried in that series of downs. The receivers, the principal receivers, were exceptionally well covered. So uh, it speaks well for the Michigan defense, certainly on this first drive. Tom Tupra and Tony Gant is the deep man for the Wolverines, standing at the 10-yard line. Tupra's punt is high, fielded at the 16. And he is smothered right there. So we'll come back, and the Wolverines will have their first possession. No score, Ohio State and Michigan. In the early going era, it simply seems like a case of nerves. It really does. Ohio State's first possession brought about an exchange fumble, an interception almost by Mallory, apparently to hit the ground, two offside penalties, and a holding penalty. So you can see they're really tight and keyed up. They're going to have to loosen up a little. Jim Harbaugh brings the Wolverines up. The ball on the 18-yard line. Stretching the count out. Off a play fake. 
Harbaugh low, throws to Caddis, the tight end. And Caddis to the 25, or Chris Spielman, number 36, brought him down. One of the things that Ohio State feared was the ability of Harbaugh to scramble. He has flushed out of the pocket. He's looking downfield now. He scrambles out. He did this beautifully last week. There's Caddis, number 81, Spielman. And I mean Spielman makes a lot of tackles. You'll hear his name most of the afternoon. Caddis, a favorite target of Harbaugh. And he moves Caddis to the right side in this alignment, splitting the running backs. Hands off. Morris comes through, exploding out to the 47-yard line, where Greg Logan was forced to bring him down. Rennie had a beautiful hole blocked off the off-tackle side, the strong side where, watch here, Caddis makes a beautiful block, number 81, along with Clay Miller, 79, and that's why Jamie Morris popped through there. This has been a week for the Morris brothers. Joe exploding Monday night for three scores for the Giants. Now it's his younger brother, Jamie, coming through the hole for the biggest play so far of this game. And on first down, they come right back with him. He comes free on the outside, breaking a tackle near the line of scrimmage with that second effort. Era in talking to the Michigan coaches, especially Schimbeckler, they were going to change their basic off-tackle dive today. What were they going to do? Well, they've got a number of blocking combinations in there. What was interesting there, Brent, was the fact that they came back to the same area. I was talking about uh, Ohio State overreact, or Michigan overreacting defensively. You saw Ohio State do the same thing. They got hurt to that one off-tackle spot. Michigan tried it again, but they failed with it. Bob Perriman is now in at fullback. Colasar, number 40. Oh, Ohio State was ready, but there's an obvious clip. And it will go against number 67, John Vitale, the offensive guard, doubling back to pick up the defender who stayed at home for the Buckeyes. Clipping on the run. That was William White who had penetrated on that play, and he was clipped by Vitale. This is a very obvious clip because it's right out in the open. You'll see number 67 coming in from the left side of your screen, right there. Six, and the official is there to see it. Very bad judgment on the part of Vitali. Let's take a look at Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan offense that will be operating here this afternoon. One of the more improved quarterbacks in all the land this year. Gerald White, an all-purpose runner who also operates a tailback when Jamie Morris is not there. You just saw John Colasar, a talented freshman on the end of the round. Paul Jokish is 6'8", and a favorite target is that tight end Eric Caddis. He's one of the better ones in the country, too. The Ohio State coaches were very impressed, not only with his receiving ability, but also his blocking. This is a second and 25. Both teams are staggering here at the opening of this game. Harbaugh, the pullback, trying to run out. He shovels it off. An extemporaneous play, and it is Morris getting out to the 45, where Greg Logan and Thomas Johnson bring him down, a 13-yard game. Great presence of mind by Harbaugh. He's going to be sacked, and he dumps the ball off right at the last moment. Watch this. Harbaugh's going to be tackled for a loss. He steps in between the two rushers, Camaro and Lead. Look at that. He deals the ball off to Jamie right at the last second before he goes down for a sack. Great play by Harbaugh. Harbaugh made that play work for a touchdown against Iowa when he shoveled the pass to Gerald White. This is third and 12 for the Wolverines. Across midfield, he is short of the first down. And again, it is Johnson and Greg Rogan. Pepper Johnson, number 98, who grew up in the Detroit area, did not play the first quarter of last week's loss because he didn't feel well and he had a tender knee. He came in for the last three, and of course, he is a ringleader whom the Buckeyes count on on the field. Monty Robbins will punt now for the Wolverines. And the sure-handed Mike Lanise is standing at the 10-yard line. The Buckeyes set a return. The punt is going out of bounds. Oh, and a beautiful punt by Monty Robbins. Inside the five-yard line, it'll be placed. 
dangerous field position for Jimmy Carsados. A 43-yard punt, and it was a beauty. We'll be right back. Linebacker Andy Moeller is the son of the defensive coordinator Gary Moeller, and we asked him about their relationship. Uh, I think I play uh, relaxed in terms that uh, I, I really don't have any problems getting along with uh, my position coach. Yeah, I've been around him a lot, so uh, I know him pretty well, and he knows me pretty well. So as far as that's concerned, uh, it's a pretty relaxed atmosphere, and uh, I think that helps me. And, of course, his compatriot, Mike Mallory, is the son of Indiana coach Bill Mallory. So they have two smart linebackers operating inside. First and ten, the ball on the four. Byers up the middle, bounces off one tackler, gets to the ten, and Andy Moeller brings him down on cue. Let's get an update now in New York, and here's Pat Hayden. Pat? All right, Brent. Daryl Dickey throws this fade pattern beautifully. This one's to Joey Klingscales, 18 yards for the score. Now, Dickey is thrown for three touchdowns. They lead 28 to nothing, and Tennessee is keeping their Sugar Bowl hopes alive. Let's go back to Brent Nero. And another son of a former coach, quarterback Dickey of Tennessee. And, of course, if they win here and then Vanderbilt, they would go to the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. On second down, here's the pitch to Byers. And Byers is swarmed on at the nine-yard line. Let's take a look at this defense that has given up less than a touchdown and outing. Jim Scarcelli, number 85, one of the outside linebackers. Mark Mesner, tremendously improved. Good nose guard, Billy Harris. An All-American at the other tackle, Mike Hammerstein. And, of course, number 33 is Jeff Akers, also outside. There is not a weak link on this defense. And something else, Sarah, they've stayed healthy. They really have, and that's been key for them. But they've played with great confidence. And, of course, that increases that motivation, as we talked about. Here is third and four. The Buckeyes will throw it. Safety valve. Byers first down. Moeller tackling Byers, but he got enough for an Ohio State first down, and it's an important first down. It really is, Brent, exactly what I was going to say, because they would have been forced to punt deep in their own territory. Michigan would have gotten good field position. Here you see Carsonis in the pocket, pocket, steps up in, and he finds Byers, and Byers just gets past that, uh, that first down marker. Very important. Coach Earl Bruce on the Ohio State sideline. Quick hand off to Cooper, the fullback, who followed the right side of that Buckeye line near the 20-yard line. Moeller and Mallory brought him down, and let's meet the rest of that Michigan defense. Mike Mallory, he calls the signals out there, taking it from Gary Moeller on the sideline. There's Gary's son. Now, excellent secondary. Garland Rivers at one corner and one of the best in the land. Number 30, Brad Cochran, whom they stay away from frequently. Back at safety, Ivan Hicks, number 17, and number 14, Tony Gant. Now, Mallory was shaken up on that last play. He's coming over to the sideline. And he is leaving the game right now, indicating that he's just a touch woozy. Todd Schulte, number 41 for the Wolverines, has gone into his place. And Andy Moeller immediately steps in as the captain on the field. Schulte checking to make sure that he has the signal with the defensive coordinators. This is a second and nine ball on the 19. Todd Schulte is 6'2", 223, about the same size as Moeller. Or rather, Maui. A play fake. Byers out as the receiver is covered. Casados goes long, but he underthrows, and it is intercepted. Hicks picks it off for Michigan. Michigan with excellent field position. A first down on the Ohio State 38-yard line. Cheryl 
Jerome White. Larry Kolick, number 33, tackled him. Let's take a look at the Ohio State defense operating today. Fred Ritter had one defensive tackle. Daryl Lee, 95, at the other. Eric Kummerow, who missed last week's game, is back. Chris Spielman, one of the better young linebackers in the land. Larry Kolick, who plays down at the nose guard and backs off. Pepper Johnson, and of course Byron Lee, 82, who's had a good year. Now Ray Holloman, number 55, has replaced Ritter. At one of the tackle spots. Fake to Morris. Harbaugh under pressure. Circles back. Throws the Kolick. Lead at the 30-yard line. John Kolasar, the freshman from Westlake, Ohio, continued to ad-lib his pattern, and Harbaugh picked him up. This is why Ohio State was concerned about Harbaugh. Looks like he's going to be sacked right there by Lee, number 95. He spins out and away, finds Kolasar under pressure, and there it is, a completion. Great job by Harbaugh. And Harbaugh paid a price, Era. Take a look at Camaro, number 14, who is coming in from the linebacking spot. He's got a shot at Harbaugh, and he makes him pay. It is third and three. Double tight end for the Wolverines. To the right, throwing complete, and it is Pattis the tight end. William White with the tackle, but it's a Michigan first down, and there is Eric Pattis again, the Wolverine tight end. And good bootleg by Harbaugh. He really faked the entire high State Buckeye team and was wide open out there. He could have run the ball or thrown the ball to Pattis as he did. Eric Jim Harbaugh is starting off with a hot hand. Really is. He's four for four for 34 yards, and he has scrambled very well and avoided the sacks. is at the 22 with this first down. Morris looking for daylight. Surrounded there at the 20-yard line by the Buckeyes. Oh. Well, there is another the game. <laughs> Ricky Lotta is not very happy with that score. That is our producer who is down in the truck wearing a Harvard sweater. Can you imagine such a thing on a that day when Michigan, Michigan is oh. playing Ohio State? We may not allow him back. Second and eight. Ball on the 20. Colasar in motion. Here's the pitch. Morris. And he is swarmed on with the blitz by Sonny Gordon, the roverback. Watch the penetration by the Buckeye defense. And, of course, it is Rogan who blocked that punt against Iowa coming up and on the pitch, getting through on the inside and bringing Morris to the ground. You know, yesterday, Bo Schembechler made a comment that I think may be true in this football game. He said the team that has the hot passer will probably win. Well, both, team, both quarterbacks came in here having really hot hands, but Harbaugh thus far has shown been the more accurate of two. Here he is again with the throw. Third and 11. Harbaugh hits Caddis again, and he is brought out of bounds by Rogan. Far short of the first down, Aaron. Boy, the defensive secondary now is tackling like they did in the Ohio-Iowa game. Great job here by Greg Rogan, number 29. Watch him come in and take Caddis right there. Great tackle. That's form tackling. Beautiful job by a defensive back on a tight end. And here is Pat Moons, who today is handling the kicking chores. This will be a 34-yard attempt by Moons. It is up. And Pat Moons hits his first field goal. field goal. He waited a long time for the opportunity. Now we are back here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Possible Cotton Bowl berth if Ohio State can win it. Meanwhile, how about the Southwest Conference? Here's Pat Hayden. 
Eli Branch, you're going to see a strong eight-yard run here by Edwin Simmons. He breaks three tackles. He wants to be in the Cotton Bowl on January 1st. Texas is driving again after a turnover, but right now they lead 7-3 in the third quarter. Let's go back to Brent Nera. All right, Pat, and of course, if Texas wins, then it would come down to Thanksgiving night in that confrontation in College Station against Texas A&M to see who would represent the Southwest Conference. What do you think of Byers' performance so far, Era? I think his foot looks very, well, his foot, at least his running has looked very good. When he made the first cut that time when he came to the sideline, he may be a very vital factor in this game yet. Moons hits it. Workman at the five. Up the middle. And brought down short of the 20-yard line. Of course, tomorrow our action continues here at 12.30 Eastern Time on CBS. We'll talk live to Joe Theismann, who suffered that terrible injury last Monday night. And also, we will talk live to Roger Staubach about whether or not the Cowboys can recover after that terrible loss to the Bears. And speaking of the Bears, how about Bear Mania? We'll take a look at the city of Chicago and how they're responding to their unbeaten team. Well, Vince Workman, the freshman, is now at tailback for the Buckeyes. His first carry behind Cooper has a seam. Steps out smartly to the 31-yard line before Hicks got him out of bounds. And it's going to be a first down for the Buckeyes on that 12-yard run by Workman. Excellent running by Workman, a young freshman. They did not want to put the burden of being the ball carrier all afternoon against the Michigan Wolverines, but he certainly responds well here with a good run and a first down. Defensively, Mallory has returned for the Wolverines. Mallory and Moeller are the inside linebackers. Long count, and it's the fullback, Cooper, out to the 35, Hammerstein, number 66. That's a duel we want to watch in that interior line. How will Ohio State handle Hammerstein here this afternoon? He is perhaps the most improved defensive lineman in the country, certainly in the Big Ten. The Ohio State coach is raving about him all week. And now Keith Byers returns to the game with a second and seven and the ball at the 35. Byers is ready there at tailback. comes looking for daylight he got out to the 37 and Mallory tackling him it was a foot he broke back in August before the season even began that ruined Keith Byers senior season one of which he was favored to win the Heisman Trophy then after missing much of the campaign he finally returned playing against Purdue he tried it against Minnesota re-injured the foot and has not done anything since well, it's tough on Keith because he had over 1,700 yards last year and had to lay out most of this season. Here's the third down with five yards to go and Carsados out of lane at the line of scrimmage. They press the receivers off the line. Carsados and he hits Carter at midfield. A first down for the Buckeyes. Garland Rivers had come up in a bump and run. Carter got behind him, made the reception, and it's a first down. Great move there by Carter on the sideline. Here's Carsados. Delivers the ball right on. He has Garland Rivers, number 13, beat him. Put a great move on him. Era, as soon as Carsados called the audible, Rivers went into a bump and run coming up to press Carter, who made a splendid move on him coming off the line. Carter now going to the left side. And again, they run on first down for the seventh straight time. Byers tried to turn it back inside when he saw the hole, and Cochran, along with Mallory, were there to close it with time running out here in the first quarter. Now he has been a real force in here defensively in this first quarter, certainly. We've come to the end of the first quarter. A Pat Moon's field goal as Michigan ahead of Ohio State. We'll return after this commercial and a word from your local station.
if you're a college football player or a fan, this has to be one of your favorite settings in the land. Ann Arbor, Michigan, more than 105,000 folks on hand here this afternoon, and it turned out to be a good one as far as the weather is concerned. How good is this Michigan defense? Well, NFL scouts have projected to me that three quarterbacks in the Big Ten could be drafted in the first round. Chuck Long of Iowa, Jack Trudeau of Illinois, and Jim Everett of Purdue. Michigan did not allow any of the three to score a touchdown. That's how good they are. And Jim Carsados in Ohio State now faces a second and eight with the ball at the 48. And he was three for six in the first quarter for 26 yards. They started a little shaky, both teams, butterflies, of course, but they settled down now, and I think we're going to see some good football. Byers and Cooper are the running backs behind Casados. Complete to Taggart, the tight end. Short of the first down, Jeff Akers, number 33, the outside linebacker, had the coverage. Guys needing a win to get to Pasadena and the Rose Bowl, and they're closing in. Iowa State shutting out Oklahoma State, which would be a big upset. Oklahoma State probably has one eye on that Oklahoma game, which is still to come. And of course, Texas with the lead on Baylor, Edwin Simmons. Young man of unfulfilled potential down there in Austin, Texas, scored that touchdown. It is third and three. And here's Cooper. Picking his daylight and busting down to the 35 where Scarcelli brought him down. But that's another Ohio State first down. Boy, he really powered in there. He got good blocking. Backside guard pulled. Watch this. The left guard. Who was Eulenhaek. Pulls. Puts a trap on. There's a nice hole there for Cooper. Number 45, Ryan Hole, the middle guard, almost gets over to make the play, but Cooper is a load of 245 pounds. Billy Harris replaces Ryan Hole on this first and ten. And it's Cooper again into the middle of that defense where Harris, number 56, was awaiting him. First down in a game like this era is so critical to the defensive coaches. It really is, and also to the offensive coaches. As Glenn Mason, the offensive coordinator of Ohio State, said yesterday, he did not want to get forced into the second down and seven, eight, and nines, and they have been, but Carsadas has delivered on this drive. Well, here they are with a second and a seven arrow. Would this be an automatic pass? He's got Byers running pretty well in that backfield. And, of course, every pass that they throw, they come up with a play for it. I think they'll come up with a pass here. Lanise is in motion. And quickly to Carter with Lanise slipping outside. And Michigan was all over the play with Scarcelli, that outside linebacker, and Mesner, number 60, teaming up. Boy, did you see that whole Michigan defense react to that ball? It's great pursuit on the part of this Michigan team. No wonder they're so good. And the point you made at the top of the broadcast, you have to keep changing up your play selection against the Wolverines because if you burn them once, they'll remember. Exactly. They react well to any kind of situation that they've been hurt by. They change their alignment. They put stunts on, change their coverages. They're a very tough team to figure out. This is a third and nine. Ohio State is three of five in third down conversion so far. And here's Cooper, and they are three of six. The ball got to the 30-yard line. Mike Mallory <laughs> staying at home and reading it well. He's made some great plays in this game so far, and we're just starting the second quarter. Mallory's made several great tackles. If he hadn't gotten his arm out there to trip him up, he was going to go for good yardage. Now, Spangler will attempt a field goal, which would tie the game. The ball will be placed down at the 38. It'll be a 48-yard effort. Michigan leading Ohio State, 3 to nothing. We have 11.45 in the first half. It's tied at 3. A 48-yard field goal by Rich Spangler. Kicking duel is underway. Moons hits one for Michigan. Then Spangler comes right back. <laughs> we are 
are back with 11.40 to go here in the first half. Michigan and Ohio State are tied at three. The significance of this game, as far as a New Year's Day bowl is concerned, is much greater for the Buckeyes than for the Wolverines and their loyal fans who come in any sort of costume here to Ann Arbor. Because the Buckeyes need a win here to get to the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. football coming up of course on Thanksgiving weekend Virginia Maryland they'll go up on Friday 2 30 Eastern time that's the first anniversary of the Doug Flutie game then on Saturday 3 30 Eastern time it is Notre Dame and Miami it could be Jerry Faust's last game as head coach of the Irish that story still unfolding Spangler kicking it off and there is John Colasar along with Jamie Morris This will be Morris at the two. Brought down at the 16-yard line. Sonny Gordon, the rover, got down to help out on that tackle. The Ohio State coaches were not satisfied with the performance of their specialty teams, and they came in here feeling that Michigan might have an edge. And there is their fine young linebacker, Chris Spielman. We asked Chris how he motivated himself for games like this. Well, I really don't say too much uh, with words. I, if I'm a leader at all, I try to lead by example. And uh, I think every one of us on this team knows what this game means. And uh, I don't think any of us have to have somebody to get us motivated. I think that's all going to come within. Controlled insanity is how the young man's game was described to us. On first down, Harbaugh will throw it. They set the screen to Morris. Fumble. Ohio State. Eric Kamalo was there along with Chris Spielman who delivered the blow. He just kept talking about Spielman and he does the job. A screen pass off to your left to Jamie Morris. Wait, Carbaugh does a good job of looking everybody off and then dumping the ball off to Morris. Morris tries to cut back to the inside. Steelman right there shakes the ball loose. Great job, great break for the Buckeyes. Let's take a look at this young linebacker with his best years still ahead of him. Roaming free, stepping inside Tabacino, delivers the blow, strips the ball, and Camaro pounces on it. Buckeyes ball inside the 20. Byers and Cooper are the setbacks. Byers behind the left side. Harris and Mesner medium. All season long, of course, Arrow, the Buckeyes have been able to take advantage of turnovers. No, well, they certainly have, but Earl Bruce told me, as a matter of fact, this morning when I visited with him, that they were going to throw the ball when they got down in the inside the 20, but that is the ninth time that they have run on first down situations. They have yet to throw it on first down. Well, here is second and nine. Cooper getting down to the 16-yard line on that second down, setting up a tough third down situation for them, and the Buckeyes are falling into a tendency of running on first down, and of course that would play right into Gary Moeller's hands as a defensive strategist. It'll be interesting to see whether or not Ohio State wants to go to the air to get the first down, go for the touchdown, or put the six points on the board of the next field goal rather to make it six. Let's see what they do here. Swinging to Cooper as they set the screen off the fake, and that is a first down, Ohio State. Well executed play, Aaron. Excellent. He, the intent of that whole play as he faked off to the right and then did a whirly bird was to pull the whole defense away from the intended man he was going to throw to. Watch here. He's like he's going to throw it to the left, spins back off, hits Byers, or Cooper rather. And they get a first down. Great execution by Carsadas. Great block by Gilmore on the outside to open the hole. And the Buckeyes come to the line of scrimmage. Now another first down. It is first and goal at the nine. This 
time they throw. Byers complete. There are penalty flags down on both sides of the field. Rivers and Gant pushing him out of bounds near the five yard line, but there were penalty markers down as the play was about to begin, and then over where the reception was made. Defense, uh, offside. I think it was Harris, the middle guard, wasn't it? I think so. He see, appeared to move before, before the, snap. the snap. Well, it's Hart Hartenstein, number 66, not 50. Not, not 56, it's 66. He was trying to guess, jump the count, and it's a five-yard penalty. Hammerstein is one of the few players that they allow to freelance. And that time anticipating and looking for the seam to come through. And Byers losing his footing on that side as he goes down. And of course, it was a second effort like that that contributed to his re-injuring that foot against Minnesota. Speaking of Minnesota, the Hawkeyes are a few steps closer to Pasadena. Michigan defense is going to be challenged here. First down at the four-yard line. And they will run with Cooper. And Cooper getting close to the two-yard line. Scarcelli and Mike Mallory bringing him down. Earl Bruce with a second and goal. taking the signal from the sideline. He has passed it along to his teammates, and now with the goal line defense. Schindler watching. Here's Byers behind the right side. Second effort gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Ohio State. time as far as Ohio State is concerned. Spangler to attempt the extra point. He cuts the goalposts in half. Fourth touchdown that's been scored on Michigan this year. Ohio State overloaded the right side, and you can see the power here of Byers as he stretches into the end zone. An excellent job. Powerful blocking in front of him by George Cooper and John Hutchison, one of the tight ends, and the Buckeyes lead as a result. Witness the birth of a bright new star. Created through the joint effort of General Motors and Toyota. Nova, from today's Chevrolet. Nova, the best of both worlds. With room and comfort, attention to details, and responsive performance. New Nova, from today's Chevrolet. It's not just better, it's the best of both worlds. Drive today's Chevy, live today's Chevy. Nova. Mr. Goodwrench knows your car's engine is an inferno of heat and friction. 100, 200 piston strokes of engine wear per second. It needs the life-saving fluid that protects it right. GM Goodwrench Motor Oil. Takes the friction, takes the heat. It's everything General Motors asks for in a fine motor oil. Get it from Mr. Goodwrench. No one knows your GM car better. No one. 
Friday, Virginia tries to block Maryland's bid for an undisputed ACC title. Saturday, Notre Dame takes on fourth-ranked Miami on CBS Sports. Era goal line power by Ohio State. Yes, they overloaded the side. Watch Hutchison, the tight end, comes over. And then watch one, two, three, four blockers. Cooper leads through here. Hutchison blocks here. And all these men lead into the end zone. There goes Hutchison in motion. You wind up with five blockers. You see five men, Hutchison leading. Cooper right through the hole with a block. And of course, Byers right behind him. Overload offensively by formation. Excellent call by Ohio State. Michigan with eight minutes and 41 seconds left here in the first half, trailing by seven points. Spangler to kick it off for the Buckeyes. talking to the Ohio State coaches you and I were both struck about their optimism offensively yes, they came in here feeling they could do something right they felt that they could get into the end zone well maybe they'd watched Byers all week I don't know <laughs> but felt that he was back Kolasar lets it bounce through the end zone on the touchback. It'll come out to the 20. Let's get an update on the Hawkeyes. Let's go to New York. Here's Pat Hayden. All right, Brent. Ronnie Harmon is on the Iowa sideline with a minor injury, but his brother Kevin takes up the slack. 11 yards out. Iowa's up now 24-3. Hayden Fry and the Hawkeyes will be my backyard on January 1st, the Rose Bowl. Let's go back to Brent Nera. Backyard indeed, where they probably will be playing UCLA, although Pat's former team may have something to say about that because the Bruins still have to beat USC. And that is never easy regardless of the one-loss record. Bob Perriman is in at fullback for the Wolverines. And this is White, who is now a tailback. There, there's the new play that Bo Schembechler's staff put in for this game. Exactly. That's what Bo was talking about yesterday. He felt that he could use the bounce play. They attack the off tackle, and then they bounce it to the outside. It looks like it's going to go off tackle. Then you'll see Paraman now just bounce it to the outside. They log in. Great blocking on the part of the, the Michigan line. They talked about this, and they did execute it for a first down. So White brings it out where it is first and 10. The ball is at the 32. Now it's a split back formation by the Wolverines. And Harbaugh handling to White. And he steps out beyond the 35. Schimbeckler told us that if White had the speed of some of the other backs around the country, he would win a Heisman Trophy. He said he is that good and that reliable. And he can play both fullback and tailback in his scheme of things. And he can do it all. He's an outstanding passer as well. And the Buckeyes have already been forewarned that when he's in that eye back, that he throws the passes from there. So they're prepared for it. Second and five for Harbaugh. This is Perelman. And he powers out to the 42-yard line. Pepper Johnson tackling him. Getting. <laughs> Looks like vintage Schembechler here, doesn't it? Power off tackle, bounce it to the outside, power off tackle to the short side of the field, away from where the rover is. Well, they loosened up that Ohio State defense as you see the measurement, the chains coming clear across the field here. And it is a first down for the Wolverines. They loosened up that Buckeye defense era by throwing frequently on first down. And now it appears that they want to come back with that traditional Michigan power. Well, they have. They've, they've played exceptionally well the last two weeks, running up scores of 48 and 49 points against Purdue and Minnesota. And they did it both with the running and the passing. Harbaugh has been hot. Lots of time in the first half. Seven minutes. White getting to the outside, bouncing again, and he is met by Gordon. Boy, good tackle by Gordon that time. Good support. Strong safety coming up. That's classic tackle in there. Great job. <laughs> Buckeye 
inside defense getting ready for what Harbaugh will come up with here. Second and seven. Kolasar, the talented freshman, is split to the right. Straight down the middle to Caddis. He's all alone inside the 20. What a beautiful job of looking off a target. Harbaugh did that time. He forced the secondary away from Caddis, and it's a 40-yard gain. And he rifled the ball in there. There was no time for the Ohio State defensive secondary to respond to the ball. Caddis splits the two deep defense. There it is. It gets there very quickly right there. No one can react to it. Here comes Terry White over to make the tackle, but it was too late. Caddis has already caught four passes for 61 yards. And keep in mind that the Ohio State coaches were concerned about him coming into this game. Now is seven for seven, Brent. With the ball at the 15, he'll throw it again. Incomplete for the first time. Terry White was the safety man closest to the ball as it bounced off the turf. You see, Harbaugh was pointing there, saying you ran the wrong route, ran the wrong route. Somebody apparently ran the wrong route against the coverage. Terry White is the hardest hitter in that secondary. He reminded me a few weeks ago against Iowa of one Jack Tatum while he was playing for the Buckeyes. He, of course, sat out last week's game against Wisconsin because he violated a team rule. Then they play a great game, the whole secondary of Ohio State in that game. The Iowa game. Second and ten. Here is White trying to stretch the defense and turn it up. Short of the 10 yard line, he is brought down by Gordon and Johnson. One of the things that I have noticed about the Buckeye defense, they have not been as successful overall as Schimbeckler's at Michigan, but they hit as hard as any defense that we've been around. That's a very good point, uh, Brent. I noticed that uh, Harbaugh came all the way to the sideline to pick up the call from Coach Schimbeckler. Let's see what they got on. They must get inside that five for a first down. This is third and seven. <laughs> Trying to avoid Lee, and he does. Harbaugh going for the first down is short of it. This will be a tough call by the coaching staff of Michigan right now. Looks like, looks like they might be just a tad short. Again, Harbaugh getting away from the rush. Watch Lee come in. I thought he had him for sure. Lee misses. Harbaugh looks to run the ball, and it looks like it's going to be fourth down and about a half a yard. Johnson getting back on the tackle. The play coming in for the sideline, and Schimbeckler will go for the first down, trailing 10-3, 4-29 in the first half. This is about a half yard to go. We've got a timeout. Michigan wants to clarify the situation, so Harbaugh, who called the timeout, comes over to meet with the coaches. We'll be right back. The pageantry in Ann Arbor. All right, Eric Parsegan, what would you do on this play? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I just go foot to foot with my offensive lineman, and I'd wedge it right out of there. Get the first down at the five-yard line. But let's see what Bo does. Well, he learned at your footsteps, so I would think that he might go to a little power football, Jim Harbaugh. I think it was interesting that, uh, that uh, when Harbaugh called the timeout, he, he made sure that he looked to see what coverage and what alignment Ohio State was in. They may change it now. We'll have to watch to see. They're in the goal line look. And less than a yard. Harbaugh for the first down. Era the thrust of that middle for Bo Schimbeckler. Just paved the way for the quarterback. Shortest 
distance between two points straight ahead. And you can see the Cavaccino, number 77, snapping the ball. And Harbaugh just follows him right in and gets the, right off his left side for the first down. Here's another angle. Watch Tavacino as he snaps the ball, closed down right there, and with that little crease, Harbaugh dove for it, and it's first and goal. Here is White trying to turn up field, and he could not. Spielman. Number 36 getting up, and you could hear the pads popping when he cracked into him that time. Harbaugh has the bootleg available to him. You always check that. He handed the ball off, then as you bootleg away from it, you see whether or not the pursuit follows the ball or checks you out. He was open that time. If Harbaugh can go with a bootleg. There's Spielman closing in on White, who will be out of the tail. In this second and goal from the five. Colas are in motion. Here's White trying to come back inside in the middle of the Buckeye defense. Closes down quickly. Ray Holloman, one of the defensive players there. Two good plays by the Buckeyes. Goal line defense at their end. They've responded well to what Michigan has tried. Jim Harbaugh is so dangerous when he's moving that you would have to think as Jokic brings the play in from the sideline that they would get him rolling in one direction on this sequence. This is third and four. And it's very difficult to power right straight ahead here. And Jokic is 6'8", being covered by a much shorter defender. Harbaugh bobbles the snap, comes back, throws, touchdown Michigan. Gerald White. to go here in the first half and Gerald White who caught that touchdown pass on the sideline he's a junior from Titusville Florida six foot 222 pounds and you can see that the Wolverines also consumed more than six minutes with that touchdown drive and here is Moons who is filling in for the suspended Mike Gillette this afternoon and so far he has been perfect one field goal on one attempt he has also kicked an extra point and now Schimbeckler would like to see this kickoff go deep but it does not fielded by the short man and Sullivan brings it out across the 20 yard line Era, show us how white got so wide open all right, Spielman here, I think, is pulled up in to this area by what he thinks this is uh, Perriman going. White slips right through the daylight right in here. But Spielman is the guy that thinks that the ball is going to be run by White. Watch here. Spielman comes forward. Now Perriman slips right through to the goal line. Harbaugh finds him. Look how open he is. So White with the touchdown and Chris Spielman remembering that moment you can bet on that this is first and ten Vince Workman is now a tailback they fake to him Carsados keeps it 
And he runs close to the 30-yard line. Jim Scarcelli brings him down, but this will be second and short for the Buckeyes. And Tennessee with one eye on the Sugar Bowl, routes Kentucky and now needs only a victory against Vanderbilt. And, of course, they would go to the Sugar Bowl. And I'm sure that Jim Nance and Pat Hayden will have all of those details on the Prudential College Football Report. Keith Byers is in at second and two. Here's Byers. And he is short of that first down. Mesner, number 60, gets off the bottom. And Mike Hammerstein, number 66, also there to take on Byers. So this will be a third down and two for Carsados and Ohio State. Ohio State needs to make a first down here. There's Byers diving, and I'm not sure that he got it. We'll see where the ball is spotted and what the officials come up with. Andy Moeller along with Mesner. And he did get it. So a first down for Ohio State with a minute and 11 left in the first half. Hammerstein, of course, is one of the four Lombardi finalists. There he is. And along with him, Mike Ruth from Boston College, that nose guard. Now, this is a first and ten. Off the play fake, Carsanos throws on first down, and it is complete to Lanise. Ivan Hicks, 17, had the coverage. And that is their first pass on a first down here this afternoon. And they will come quickly because they are inside of a minute. With protection, almost intercepted. Looking for Byers and almost picked off by Billy Harris, the nose guard who has dropped off. You tell me they don't have a variety of coverages. That's the nose man dropping out to the right flat and almost intercepted it. He was a nice youngster. We had a chance to visit with him on Thursday from Xenia, Ohio. Let's see how he got out there. Here's Carsadas. Well, you'll see him come into your picture right here. The nose man, number 56, Harris, Billy Harris. 257 pounds covering in the right flat. Everett Ross, number 48, has checked in. The speed to go deep at 33 seconds. Byers is going to fake, and now he was looking to throw. He'll keep it, and he comes out beyond midfield with 25 seconds. Hicks bringing him down. It'll be an Ohio State first down, so the clock will stop while the chains are being moved. Well, he didn't find anyone open. And this is what Byers can do. He fakes the reverse to Smith. Now he looks for the receiver with that left hand, finds some daylight, and you think he is in the load running with that football? Woo! -hoo. Hicks really pays a price. No, we've got a timeout here in Ann Arbor. We'll be right back. We're tied at 10. Back with 25 seconds remaining. Ohio State with the ball, and the Lombardi Award will be presented down in Houston on December 5th. And, of course, we've already told you that Hammerstein of Michigan is one of the candidates, and the other, the big nose guard from Boston College, Mike Ruth. And the other two finalists, Leslie O'Neill from Oklahoma State. And from Oklahoma, Tony Casillas, the great nose guard of the Sooners. Hammerstein on the field for that Wolverine defense. Carsados having huddled with Earl Bruce and the Buckeye assistants. Delivers the play. They are to the right side. Off a of play fake. Going deep. And almost intercepted on the far side was Cochran working over there against Lanise. Jeff Akers coming back. He had deep coverage on that play, too, Coach. It's amazing the versatility of this Michigan defense. They have outside linebackers running deep with 
fast, speedy receivers. Here's Carsadas trying to throw up the sideline. And you see the ball pop out of Cochran's hands. Should have had the interception. Carsados is 8 of 13 for 48 yards and has already thrown one interception and could have as many as three here in the first half. Exactly Mallory on right. their first series appeared to have one, which did hit the carpet first, according to the officials, and now Cochran can't get the handle. On second down, drops it to Cooper. Cooper down to the 43 with time stopped at the eight second mark. Jim Scarcelli tackling him and Earl Bruce and the Buckeyes. Well, there's a stern looking Bruce over there, isn't he? Yeah. I, uh... <laughs> well, we've got a little break here in the action, so let's take a look at the Ohio State campus and the Big Ten, all the schools. As the Big Ten Conference enters its 90th season of football competition, that rare combination of commitment to academic excellence and success on the playing field continues. Big Ten football is exciting, competitive, and entertaining, as evidenced by the continuous record-setting attendance figures posted year after year. But it's more than just the thrills and glory on the field. It's a weekend of bands, cheering crowds, color and pageantry which makes Big Ten football such a happening. The conference also excels in many other sports, including men's basketball, which always ranks among the nation's best, and ever-improving women's basketball, as well as strong support programs like hockey and wrestling, which have been dominated by Big Ten teams on a national level in recent years. But it's the nationally renowned academic reputation which distinguishes Big Ten universities, where tomorrow's leaders in research, technology, and higher education are ready to meet today's challenges. Back for the final eight seconds here of the first half. And of course at halftime, Jim Nance and Pat Hayden will update you on everything that is going on across the land on this one of the final Saturdays of college football as we get down close to the bowls. And I'm sure they'll have the latest information on who is going where. Here, Ohio State needs a win to get to the Cotton Bowl. And I'm sure that Pat Dye and Auburn watching this carefully because if the Buckeyes lose, then Auburn will be coming to Dallas. Garcados, incomplete. Tony Gant, depending on the play. Down to the final four seconds here in the first half. Now Spangler has already kicked a 48-yarder here this afternoon. It's going to take about 61 yards here. Let's see. This He does have a, a following wind. So they must have some kind of confidence he's got a chance at it. This will be a great kick if he makes it. There it is. Missing. But not by that much. That's <laughs> right. So we've come to the half. Tied at 10, and the Buckeyes struck first. As far as the touchdowns were concerned in this game. Take a look at how they got on the board. With Hutchison in motion. They sent big Keith Byers in behind him. The crease opened and he dove in. But then the Wolverines came right back. They drove 80 yards with Jim Harbaugh. Bobbling the snap, pulling it down, and Gerald White, number 22, coming clean in the end zone. And that nodded the score after the extra point. And we go to the half. Deadlocked at 10. Typical Michigan, Ohio State. CBS Sports presents College Football. Sponsored by your Toyota dealer, the 1986 Celica. Totally redesigned for performance and style. Who could ask for anything more? The people of Rockwell International, where science gets down to business. And by Honda All-Terrain Vehicles. Honda, follow the leader. Uh, 
Archie Griffin remembers these wars against Michigan. The former Ohio State great is with Pat O'Brien. Pat? All right, Brent, thank you. Brent was just saying you remember these wars. How did you prepare for this kind of a game? We prepared all year long for this kind of a game. This is what people come to Ohio State for, to play against Michigan. You were saying you prepared for the noise in this stadium as well. Yes, we used to uh, put a lot of uh, noise over our loudspeakers in our stadium and uh, run our plays uh, with the loudspeakers going. Archie Griffin, of course, has two of the greatest bookends <laughs> in football history. He's got two Heisman trophies. Who do you like this year for the Heisman? Well, I think it's going to be a toss-up between uh, Bo Jackson and Chuck Long, but uh, don't be surprised if a sleeper pops up in Lorenzo White of uh, Michigan State. All right. How about the second half here, Archie? Who do you like? I know who you like, but what do you think of the second half? Well, I think it's going to be a hard-fought second half, just like the first half was. I think both teams are going to have to loosen up a little bit. They both played very tight. All right. Archie, thank you very much. The greatest running back ever to put on a Buckeye uniform. Brent, back to you. Thank you, Pat. And Jim Carsados with the spotlight squarely on him, loosening up over there on the sidelines. Rich Spangler, who hit that 48-yard field goal and missed a 61-yarder, but not by that much. With the breeze gusting a bit here in Michigan Stadium, it was blowing right to left pretty much in the first half, and now it seems to have turned around a little bit. Second half is underway. Jamie Morris at the four for Michigan. And Leach rides him down at the 25-yard line. So, of course, tomorrow we're going to find out if the Chicago Bears can stay unbeaten. And also, we will start at 12.30 Eastern time, the NFL today. We'll hear from Joe Theismann live out of Washington. Find out how he came out of surgery after that awful injury. Roger Staubach live from Dallas. And then we'll take a look at Bear Mania before they take the field against the Atlanta Falcons. And many of you also see the Redskins go up against Pittsburgh. And then our doubleheader game, the key one, Philadelphia and Dallas. Can the Cowboys come back? We'll find out tomorrow. First and ten. From the I formation, they run Gerald White. Ray Holloman, number 55, making the stop as we start the second half. Area was a tremendous ball control drive that Bo Schembechler and the Wolverines used there in that second quarter against Ohio State. It was vintage Bo Schembechler coach teams. They power off tackle, the power inside, and they managed to maintain possession of the ball, and it was a very impressive drive, although right here they're facing a second down about nine. Bringing the Wolverines up to the line. Play fake to White. Hard ball to run. Slips down wisely at the 30. This will be third and long. Well, what does the state of Florida mean to Michigan? Well, that right foot belongs to one Pat Moons, and so far, Florida has given Michigan all its points. Both Moons and White are out of that state. Third and five for Harbaugh. Jokic getting ready to come from the right side. Over the middle and complete to the tight end, Caddis. He picks up where he left off. Another 17-yard gain by Pattis. And also an excellent throw by Harbaugh. Pattis driving. You see here Lee's trying to stay with him. Number 82, man to man, but he cannot. Pattis breaks away from him, and Harbaugh puts it right there. Pattis from Cincinnati, Ohio, has now caught five passes for 78 yards, and Terry White brought him down at the 47-yard line. They run Perriman on first down, and he blasts through. Close to another first down. Rogan and Johnson bringing the fullback down. Vital number 67 pulls. Look at the beautiful hole they blocked right at the point of attack. Let's take a look at that hole from another angle. Watch the blocking here by the right side of the line. And the backside guard, Vital, come across number 66 right here, 67 rather. And there you go with Paraman, number 37, through that hole. Second and short. Michigan can put it up here if they want. And they will. 
throws high but complete. And the first down, and Gerald White slipping out of that backfield was a safety valve. Again, LSU beats them 10-7. And Yale beats Harvard 17-6. Here it is first and 10. Ball is at the 38-yard line. Slot left. Movement, but the Buckeye got back, and here's White. He has a seam. at the 31-yard line, and again it is Johnson and White being forced to make the tackle. Brent, this is a very similar drive to the one that Michigan had in the first half, starting at their own 20-yard line and grinding the ball with good blocking in the, by the offensive line. The thing that makes it so difficult for that Buckeye defense is the fact that Harbaugh is a dangerous passer. They cannot be thinking just off-tackle run by this Wolverine attack. They put good pressure on Harbaugh, but he has scrambled out. He is 10 of 11 here this afternoon for 109 yards. This time they'll run White. Turns upfield for a first down. Kolick, number 33, tackling him there. You see Bo Schembechler talking to Harbaugh there. And they want something special here. We are looking at a football team that is only... Three points away from having an unbeaten season. They tied Illinois, of course, but another field goal would have given them the win over Iowa. And here they run White to the 25-yard line. Johnson and Kolick tackling him right there. So this will be second and long, Coach. They've been forced into this second and long a number of times, and that's exactly what Ohio State wanted to force Michigan into. But Harbaugh, when he's been caught in that kind of a situation, has managed to find receivers open after scrambling and maintain possession of the ball, and then they start grinding again. Pattis is lined up to the left. Throwing high out of bounds. Jokic is tall, but he ain't that tall. <laughs> no. <laughs> he couldn't find anyone open. He threw it in a general direction of Jokic, but even at 6'8", he wasn't going to get it. I apologize to all the English professors from Michigan and Ohio State who were listening. <laughs> this is third down and nine. who is slapped down at the 20-yard line. Byron Lee meeting him there. Okay, here's another look at this pass reception, but unfortunately for the Wolverines, it comes up short of the first down. You see him crossing right over the middle, right there, Jokic. Catches the ball, but it's way short of the first down by about three yards. Moons with his second field goal attempt. Puts it down at the 28, and the 38-yard field goal is on its way, and it's good. Making the most of an opportunity. Second field goal puts the Wolverines up by three. Keith Byers and the Buckeyes will be right back. Michigan leading Ohio State by three, and certainly, Earl, we want to send along our congratulations to Hayden Fry, 
and the whole Iowa team as the Hawkeyes win the Big Ten championship 31 9 over Minnesota this afternoon and so the Hawkeyes go to Pasadena and the Rose Bowl Michigan will be headed to the Fiesta Bowl down in Tempe the Buckeyes must win here this afternoon to get a berth in the Cotton Bowl if Michigan wins this game then the Buckeyes will go to the Citrus Bowl and Auburn and Bo Jackson will head for Dallas and it is very likely that Jackson will bring along his Heisman Trophy for that confrontation in the Southwest Conference of course Baylor Texas and Texas A&M still with a chance here is Moons who is the man of the moment in Michigan Woolridge has it bounce off him free ball alertly picked up by Workman who gets out of bounds did Workman save? Workman uses good judgment here. He's just a freshman. Number 42. Watch him step in. Right after this bobble ball, you'll see him come from the right. Woolridge fumbled it. Workman grabs it and steps out of bounds. Even though it's bad field position, he saved it. He saved it from Michigan recovering the ball. Seven yard line. I formation. Carsados trying to be heard above the din, and there's movement in the offensive line. Rory Graves jumped across. Carsados may have been changing the call at the line, or Graves simply could not hear him, Mara, because it was very loud down at that end. Didn't Bo, Bo say something about the crowd wouldn't bother the opposition? <laughs> <laughs> Look at here. This is definitely, I think, you see that Carsados was trying to call an audible, but the noise created a problem, and the penalty will obviously go against, I think, the Buckeyes. I think the crowd noise had a definite effect there, don't you, Brent? Absolutely. Uh, the crowd noise was affecting Casados, you could tell, as he was yelling back and forth. And... Did you notice that Mark Messner continued on number 60 to put Casados down in the end zone for a safety, and the official reprimanded him for doing so because the whistle had blown. So referee Tom Quinn measures off half the distance. First and 13, the ball is at the four. And now Quinn stops the action. Earl Bruce and the Buckeyes will wait for a little quiet here in this situation. Carsados turned to the referee Quinn. Quinn gave him the discretionary timeout, and certainly we have seen this in virtually every Big Ten game that we have done, and we've done many this fall. This has been a big issue, a controversial issue, because of the interpretation of the rule during the course of mid-year. Nate Harris brings in the play from the Ohio State sideline. He replaces Mike Lanise. George Cooper and Keith Byers. They are set behind Carsado Suera. We'll just wait now until things quiet down. Michigan players were trying to get the fans to quiet down. Byers out across the 10 yard line. Now, here this afternoon, before 106,000 moons with a 34 yard field goal, put Michigan on the scoreboard first. And then it was Spangler's turn, a 48 yard field goal. We were tied at three. The first touchdown, and Ohio State scored it. Keith Byers from two yards out. But then Michigan drove 80 yards, and Harbaugh went to white, and it was deadlocked. And a short time ago, Moon's second field goal put the Wolverines up by three. This is second and 12. Carsados will throw from his own end zone. Now he'll run out of it. And he dives down at the 15-yard line with Moeller closing in on him. And he got, he got himself out of dangerous field position. At least they have some kicking room. 
He used good judgment. He did not find anybody open. This is a great shot from the end zone right here where you can see Carsadis' view. Cannot find an open receiver. He is able to scramble out and take the ball out to the 15-yard line. And at least if they have to punt, if they don't make the first down, they're not as in bad as field position as they were. Carsados trying to be heard again, especially to the wide receivers. Keeping the ball, and he may be short. It's going to be very close. Jeff Akers, 33, stepped into the gap. They're not going to get it. The punting team is coming on the field for the Buckeyes. There seemed to be a mix-up in the backfield that time. Carsadas wanted to run the option, and it seemed as if the timing was completely off. Tom Tupa bothered somewhat by an injured back the last few weeks. He'll hit this at about the five-yard line. Tony Gant is the deep man. Under pressure, he just does get one off. It takes an Ohio State roll. their designated blockers comes in on Tupa and is so close to blocking this but Tupa does get it off and Arnold misses by inches we'll be right back in Ann Arbor when you're looking for more in a car reach for the stars introducing the all-new 1986 Toyota Celica GTS totally redesigned to give you more a front-wheel drive car that truly handles like a sports car. Let the electronically fuel-injected 16-valve twin cam dazzle you. Let its 135 horsepower move you. The Toyota Celica. A star is born more like a legend. Who says America has run out of opportunities? There are plenty out there, if you look for them. The people who built this country were doers, not doubters. Risk takers seeking opportunities, not guarantees. Today, I still see vast opportunities in hundreds of small to mid-sized companies whose entrepreneurial spirit and energy will continue to build America. At First Jersey Securities, we specialize in discovering such emerging growth companies for today's investors with vision. First Jersey Securities, come grow with us. Introducing the amazing Minolta Maxim. The world's easiest SLR, because it alone has built-in automatic focusing. Look, Maxim's autofocus lets you get perfect shots before others can even focus. Change lenses. Maxim again gets the shots that used to get away. Only the human eye focuses faster. Minolta Maxim. Only from the mind of Minolta. The state up north plays the state down south. The governors are always here. Let's go to Pat O'Brien. All right, Brent, thank you. Kind of a political summit here going on with these neighboring states. Jim Blatford here for, from uh, Michigan and Dick Celeste from Ohio. What did you guys bet on this game today? We're going to treat our problems for a day, depending on who wins and who loses. But no wager, huh? No, we're, we're not for gambling, but we are for fun. So that's what we're having today. Who's running the states today? Well, actually, I think it all of Ohio's up here because we have 27 players on the Michigan team who come from the state of Ohio. Governor Blanchard, you have sort of a political dilemma. You're from Michigan State. That's right, but I'm uh, wearing the maize and blue today because they're playing Ohio State. We not only expect a victory, but we are uh, receiving a lot of revenue from the people of Ohio. We want to thank the governor for that. All right, let's go back to Brent quickly. All right, Pat, thank you. Perriman turns the corner, and he's busted out of bounds at the 44 by Pepper Johnson. This is an important defensive sequence by the Buckeyes, Aaron. It really is, and they have been, they have given yardage both passing and running in the last couple of drives. They're going to have to tighten up that defense. Second and three. Aaron, they have been able to bounce and even slant offside. The basic thing that Bo was talking about yesterday, the bounce play, come to the off-tackle play, and then slide to the outside. And that's what Perriman did on that last play. And they've been coming up with second and short like this. Right, he's free into the 45-yard line. This 
just a reverse pivot handoff. Watch Harbaugh reverse pivot. And right there, he gives the ball to White. Look at him read the daylight. Great block there by uh, Clay Miller, I believe it was. Number 72, John Elliott. I'm sorry, it was a quick tackle. They are both excellent tackles. Elliott and Miller do a superb job for the Wolverines. One of them from Long Island. That's Elliott. Miller's out of Oklahoma. Harbaugh keeping it on the option, and he is cut off that time by you-know-who, number 36, Chris Spielman. Well, they are celebrating in Iowa City. Let's go get an update from Pat Hayden. All right, Brent, it sounds like the crowd is involved in Ann Arbor, but this was a scene moments ago in Iowa City. A lot of these folks will be in Pasadena January 1st, rooting the Hawkeyes on. By the way, Rodney Harmon bruised his shoulder and never returned. Also, Brent, Texas leads Baylor 17 to 10 with less, less than two minutes left. Let's go back to Brent Nera. Yeah, thank you. Texas needs that one to get into a confrontation with Texas A&M if the Aggies can beat TCU. That game is on Thanksgiving Day. Now, the reason we have a stoppage of play is that Lee of the Buckeyes was shaken up. He's fine being helped to the sideline. He'll miss at least a play, and we'll be back. Missile exercise, Caribbean. Now, it's an adventure. Our company is growing. I want a bank with people I can talk to with the resources to back them up. Welcome to National Westminster Bank USA. The people and the resources you need today. Growing businesses need more than traditional lending. We provide creative solutions. Our approach to cash management can provide you with more cash to manage. In New York or around the world, we serve you with top professionals backed by worldwide resources. Welcome to National Westminster Bank USA. along with Aero Parsegan. Seven minutes and 18 seconds to go in quarter number three. Michigan leading Ohio State by three. Harbaugh to throw it. Runs away from the pressure. And he is down at the 42-yard line with Gordon in hot pursuit. And the Buckeye Rover has been roving all over the artificial surface here this afternoon. For Gordon and the Buckeyes to play on New Year's Day, they must come back here and win this, and then they will have an appointment in Dallas. If not, it will be Pat Dye, Bo Jackson, and the Auburn Eagles who will be in there. And our game will kick off 1.30 Eastern time on CBS, the 50th Cotton Bowl Classic. Darrell Lee has returned for Ohio State, third and seven. Colasar inside the 30-yard line, and that's a first down for Michigan. William White with the tackle, and the freshman receiver picks up 13 more yards, and again, Harbaugh has been so impressive. Under pressure, he threw a beautiful strike. Now, well, he's made a big difference in this Michigan Wolverine football team, a team that was 6-6. Six and six. Last year, they lost Harbaugh in the Michigan State game with a broken arm. And now he's back, and he's done a remarkable job. Here's the throw. Watch here as he gets pressure just as he throws the ball. And Kolasar, right here on the sideline, has run a beautiful route to the outside. And, of course, it's a first down. He is 12 of 14 for those 127 yards. And the touchdown pass to Gerald White. Daryl Lee, again shaken up, is being helped off to the Ohio State sideline. And so Alex... Higdon and Fred Ritter, who have been operating in that spot, have been taking turns when Lee is shaken up, and this time Ritter will come off the sideline, and he will play against Schembechler and the Wolverines. Michigan, inside the 30. A year ago, they were beaten resoundly in Columbus. But here in their home setting, and it's an awesome one indeed, they are in command. White and Spielman is there with Holloman coming in underneath. Boy, that Spielman is really something. He can really tackle. He just stopped him dead in his tracks and took him to the side. He's a football player, that guy. Let's take a look at it here from the ground level. You'll watch Spielman come in and take White, who's about 215, 20 pounds, right there, and just drive him back down. 
He's a player. Second and seven. Kolasar and Jokic are to the left side. Caddis is to the right. Harbaugh runs straight ahead, and the Buckeyes penetrated quickly that time and would not let him get back as Pepper Johnson, 98, led the penetration. Oklahoma with two first quarter touchdowns. Oh, they got to be happy down there in Norman. Trying to get a berth in the Orange Bowl against Penn State. This is third and nine. for Kolasar. He's got him. First down, Michigan. 13 yards to the freshman wide receiver. That's a great job again by Harbaugh and Kolasar. Watch Kolasar drive off, and Harbaugh picks up the single coverage, but the coverage is too soft. Puts a move on and turns to the outside, and you see him break in the... And the ball is right there by Harbaugh. William White was too deep on the coverage. But the thing about it, Brent, is Harbaugh picked up the single coverage right now and went to him. First and 10 at the 15. Here is Perryman up the middle, and he explodes inside the 10-yard line. Schembechler keeping them honest with the fullback that time. Now watch the blocking and watch Perryman. Did you see the Buckeye defense take that step to the right? They froze them. And Perriman came back, and he took the ball inside the 10-yard line, where it'll be second and three. Ever since that long drive in the second quarter, Michigan has dominated this game offensively. This will be White. He's inside the five-yard line. And that should be another first down for the Wolverines. It's the plain isolation play over the left side with the fullback leading. Put a good block on the linebacker. You can see the concern there. Earl Bruce, he certainly doesn't like what's happening. This fellow does. Double tight end formation with this first end goal from the four. Bo getting the information from above in the press box. Kolasar comes in motion. They'll run in that direction with White. He tries to bounce outside, and he cannot. Bo upset about that play. Derek Eisenman helping out on this tackle. There it is. They just couldn't get the blocking at the point of attack. He tries to bounce a little to the outside. And, the, and it was good defensive work in there. Bo had to be upset with Kolasar. Kolasar froze standing up, and the play was still going on. And this Eisenman, number 61, has played so well the last two weeks. Now, it is second and goal from the five. Harbaugh. Touchdown, Eric Kattis.
job by Harbaugh. Watch Caddis, number 81. He slips through. They didn't seal him up at the line of scrimmage. Now as Harbaugh moves, Caddis cuts back toward the middle. And Harbaugh finds him wide open in the back of the end zone. Michigan's in command. Well, right now with Ohio State losing, it looks like Auburn going to the Cotton Bowl as you see the young man who caught that touchdown pass. But the Southwest Conference still to be heard from and the Texas Longhorns in Austin. They knock Baylor out of that race 17 10 Texas now heads into the showdown against Texas A&M on Thanksgiving and that is in College Station and the winner of that game of course goes into the Cotton Bowl against either Ohio State or Auburn and the Buckeyes must come from behind to get into that 50th Cotton Bowl Classic at 1 30 Eastern time on CBS two minutes and 56 seconds to go in the third and Pat Moons who is kicking today because Mike Gillette was suspended for one game is making the most of his opportunity. Everett Ross handles it. He's at the 20. Trying to get a hole and he's smothered there at the 23 yard line. Well, they always show us how Caddis got open. Here's Caddis at the tight end spot. You see motion by Colasar, but he'll come right into the right flat. Watch him. He'll work free in the end zone. He goes all the way to the corner. You see him releasing off. Then he'll work back slightly to his right, right here. He'll come all the way here and then back. There he is. Now watch him slip to his right. There's the ball. And that was the 17th touchdown pass for Harbaugh, tying Rick Leach's record back in 1978. Now it's up to Carsados to rally the Buckeyes, and he is complete to Mike Lanise. He is hit by Jeff Akers, number 33, with Jim Harbaugh watching from the sideline, and now he turns a 10-point lead over to the most efficient scoring defense in the land. They have given up only four touchdowns, one of them here this afternoon. They have yielded only 19 points in the second half all year long. Hammerstein, Mallory, Moeller, Akers, Scarcelli, Harris, Cochran, Rivers, Gant, Hicks. They're as good as they come. It is second down and seven. Off a play fake to Cooper. Carsados going to the sideline and completely wanted Carter. And all over Carter. Far sideline. Carcelli had the coverage that time. And now, let's go back to New York for an update from Pat Hayden. All right, Brent, you mentioned that Texas score a moment ago. Here was Baylor's last play, fourth and five, 30 seconds left, incomplete pass by Cody Carlson. Remember, Baylor has not beaten Texas in Austin since 1951. We'll be watching Thanksgiving Day. Let's go back to Brent Nero. And here is a third and seven that the Buckeyes badly need to convert. Turf incomplete. Look at the response of that Michigan defense. You talk about unity, desire, and determination. They are motivated. Oklahoma with that lead in the first quarter over Nebraska, 14-0. Now it is fourth down, and here is Tupa. He will be punted. They send back a very sure-handed deep man. Tony Gant, number 14, is standing at the 30-yard line. The one thing Michigan does not want now is a fumble. They would settle for just any old kind of fair catch in this situation. They're not looking for a hero. Tupa, with trouble, gets it off. And it takes a bounce for Ohio State. So Tupa has been living dangerously on the last two punts, but this one, a 46-yarder. Well, the Ohio State campus down in Columbus. Let's take a look at it while we've got this opportunity. 
from Jesse Owens' heroics to Archie Griffin's Heisman's, Ohio State claims one of the most distinguished athletic traditions in America. Now, as part of a $350 million private fundraising campaign for excellence throughout the university, $45 million is being raised to ensure this rich athletic heritage. Ground will be broken this spring for a multi-sport practice facility, part of our master plan for athletic excellence. The Ohio State University, a distinguished past, a dynamic future. I'll bet they are much quieter on that campus than they are on this one right now. With a 10-point lead, Earl Bruce trying to dig up because the last three times Michigan has had possessions, they have scored. Touchdown, that was in the second quarter. They took six minutes. Then, here in the second half, a field goal and a touchdown. Those two drives have consumed nine minutes. And Jim Harbaugh hands off to White, who hurdles across, and is tackled by Fred Ritter, number 90. And in this third quarter, with 1.36 left to go, Ohio State has made 15 total yards, while Michigan has, has over 120. Second down and eight. Jimmy Harbaugh, so impressive here this afternoon, doesn't receive the attention of an Everett or a Long or even a Trudeau for that matter. Going to run, being cut off and downed at the 30-yard line. So the Buckeyes did not give him too much daylight, and again it was Derek Eisenman along with Spielman. Eisenman's an impressive linebacker. We've seen this is the third time we've seen him. And he comes into the ball game, he becomes involved. He gets around the ball. He's a good football player. Just a freshman. So he's going to be around a while. Well, here is third and seven, and an opportunity for Ohio State to finally shut down this offense. Safety valve is white, and he's got it for a first down. Brett, that makes Harbaugh eight for eight on third down situations. His father, of course, the football coach at Western Michigan. His father was on the coaching staff out at Stanford for a time, and Jimmy Harbaugh went to the same quarterbacking camp as Jim Carsados did. And Carsados was out of the Fullerton area, and one of the teachers out there was a quarterback by the name of John Elway. And if John is watching right now, he should know better than most that his student is doing a great job for the Wolverines. We've come to the end of the third quarter. Michigan leads Ohio State by 10. CBS Sports presents College Football. Sponsored by Hayes Microcomputer Products. Say yes to the future with Hayes. Toyota, who offers a full line of 1986 cars and trucks. More dependability, more quality, more satisfied owners. Who could ask for anything more? And by Strohs and Stroh Light. Now you're talking good times, and Strohs is spoken here. First and ten for Jimmy Harbaugh and the Wolverines, who lead by ten as we start the final quarter. And here is White, right straight ahead, and there was number 36, Mr. Spielman. Now, the Toyota Leadership Award is presented weekly to a team member who's been singled out by his athletic department for his team contributions, grades, and citizenship. And today's winners are Pepper Johnson of Ohio State and Brad Cochran of Michigan. Toyota will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Second and seven. And Jim Harbaugh uses one of his three timeouts. He took a look at that Buckeye defense, did not like what he saw, and he will come over to the sidelines and confer with Schimbeckler. It's kind of an unusual situation. Uh... His second down and eight that he would waste the first down or timeout. Must have been something important or something he really didn't like that they had called. We've got a timeout here in Ann Arbor. Michigan leading Ohio State. Jim Carter. 
Rosados can only wait on the sideline. We'll be right back. And the Bears, of course, will attempt to extend that streak against Atlanta. That's coming up tomorrow. A lot of you will see Washington-Pittsburgh and then the doubleheader game. The Philadelphia Eagles will go down and play the Dallas Cowboys. Can the Cowboys come back? Now we'll cover that tomorrow starting at 12.30 Eastern Time on CBS. Big doubleheader day here. This is second and seven for Michigan. 14 minutes and 23 seconds to go. Michigan leading Ohio State by 10 points. Colasar in motion. Here's the pitch to White. White stretches the defense and then gets the corner turn before White can pounce on him over there. But a superb bit of running, and I think Ohio State was thinking he might just throw the option pass that time. <laughs> that really was a broken play. Half the team blocked to the left. The fullback went left. A couple of them went to the right. <laughs> they wind up making yardage on it. It's that kind of day for <laughs> Michigan, Coach. That's right. Everything is right for him. Well, this is third down and a long yard, so they go to the double tight end formation. And Harbaugh to throw out of it. Straight down the middle for Colasar, overthrows him. That was an unusual call. It really was. They were gone that from. was the strangest call of the day. I think they anticipated the possibility that they would be in man-to-man -man coverage coming up to try to stop the play, and the coverage was excellent. They faked the off-tackle play in hopes that the defender will respond, but no, they were back there in good coverage on Colson. Monty Robbins. He will punt for Michigan. Standing at the 33. The Buckeyes set a return. Mike Lanise faked the fair catch. The ball bounces into the end zone. So it'll come back on the 20-yard line, a touchback, a 52-yard punt. When you come back, the Buckeyes will have the ball and 13-22. And you have two more minutes for your choice. We still need a linebacker. What does the computer say? It says check the master file back at the office. Office? The office. Atlanta, stand by. Okay, we need a linebacker. If your business's future depends on information and records, a Hayes modem would help it run smarter. Computer says Hannes Vega. Unless Boston gets... Boston, what's the delay? Office, Commissioner. Boston selects Ortego. Office. Hey. A real sleeper? Hey, no! Say yes to the future with Hayes. Rise and shine, cast your line, catch the limit here. Now you're talking fishing, now you're talking beer. Now you're talking good times, and Stroh's is smoking here. Stroh's, fire brewed for smooth, consistent taste. Now you're talking Stroh's, now you're talking beer. Now you're talking good times, and Stroh's is smoking here. Tonight, a big city lawyer puts her life on the line defending a murder suspect. We ought to go in there and take it. In a county where vigilante justice prevails, Jennifer O'Neill, Robert S. Woods, Chase. Once again, Iowa is Rose Bowl bound after beating Minnesota today. Here's what Hayden Fry had to say after the Hawkeyes clincher. I, th I think this exemplifies the, the utopia of, of fun. Uh, I can imagine in our dressing room right now, uh, they're doing the hokey pokey. <laughs> so a rosy situation in Iowa City. Let's go back to Brent and Era. All right, Jim, thank you. 13 22 to go, 2010. Michigan leading Ohio State. And the Buckeyes come up, and they have been dominated by this Michigan defense here in the second half. Carsanos to Carter complete. A first down, the tackle by Doug Mallory after a 19-yard gain, and that's the play they must keep coming up with. Carter does a great job of getting behind the linebackers. The linebackers are chasing the underneath coverage, and then, of course, he comes right in the seam in front of the deep defenders, an area that I think Michigan is vulnerable depending on the coverage that they're in. But we may see more of that on this drive. 
good performance by the offensive line that time. Arab. Michigan did not have that great pressure on Carsanos. Here it comes this time. Mesner, but he drops it to Byers. Byers is out to midfield and a first down. And eight Wolverines surround Keith Byers, who is a little slow in getting up there. But he's fine after a 13-yard gain. Give you an idea of how that third quarter went. And it is a Michigan player who is down. That is Brad Cochran, their All-American cornerback who is injured. And that is a big injury. There are the numbers, Coach. Well, look at that possession time. That doesn't, this three minutes and 37 seconds doesn't give guys like Keith Byers and Chris Carter and Lanise much of a chance. Possession of 11-13 is really significant. And then look at the total yards, 15 yards to 134. What a Michigan quarter. Era Brad Cochran is one of the best cornerbacks in the land. He is so good that opponents seldom throw at him. We don't mention his name because they don't go in that direction. He is being helped off. Now watch number 30 here in this pile. There are about eight Wolverines, and this is Cochran. Watch what happens to him in this pileup. You can see that he is landed on right there by Bob Maggs, the center, number 71. He injured his leg, so he is being helped off right now. And Greg Randall, number 10, comes into that cornerback, and you can expect Ohio State to quickly go over there and test him. They're looking right at him. Carsano's at a goal. Oh, he cannot hold on. It's incomplete. Lanise almost came up with a catch that was remarkably similar to a year ago. It didn't take him long to go at Cochran's replacement. It sure didn't. They went right after Greg Randall, number 10, coming in. 6'1", 183, a senior. He runs a quick out pattern here. Then he comes up, Randall, to respond. It would have been a great catch. I didn't realize that he had to dive so far. It was a great effort by Lanise. Incomplete, and this will be second and 10. 12.31 to go. They will take Lanise over to Randall's side again, but now Mallory moves over like they might be doubling. Now Mallory cheats in. He'll back up. They're trying to bait Carsados. He comes with a screen to Cooper and overthrows him. That ball go right through Cooper's hands, I think, right? Or was it over his head? It was a little bit high. It may have been catchable. Take a look at it and see what you think here, Coach. Yeah, let's take a look and see how high it is. Should have had it. Yeah, I should have. That's two in a row now that they could have had. Lanise almost made the catch. Cooper should have had it, and he had a beautiful wall set up in front of him for big yardage. You got to catch the football. Third and ten. The ball is at the 49. Carsano straight back. He'll run. Now he throws it to Tiger. It's a first down. Ball to the 31-yard line. And Cochran, who sat out two plays, comes up to make the tackle after a 17-yard gain. Michigan so it did just, not take Cochran long to get back in. Excuse me. Michigan just puts on a three-man rush, and they almost get right there to Carsadas. Carsadas does a great job of hitting Taggart just as he's going down. Ball is on the 31. 12 minutes. State trailing by 10. Here's Keith Byers, and there's no hole there. Harris, the nose guard, led the assault against Byers that time. Six thousand, the fourth largest crowd in the history of Michigan Stadium. And that is the largest crowd of this year. And only 53 behind the NCAA record, which was here versus Ohio State in 1979. This is second and 11. Incomplete. 
Keith Byers was wide open underneath. He didn't see Byers, who had worked in underneath. Instead, he tried to stretch it out and go longer to Chris Carter. And Byers, in frustration, just beat his hands against the artificial turf. Now watch Byers, number 41, slip out of the backfield. Underneath, he's wide open, and you can see the ball went over his head and was short of Carter. Going back to the attendance thing, just for a moment, if I may, Frank, Don Cannon told me today that every ticket for every home game has been sold out before. There are no tickets available at all. That's 105,000, 106,000 people. It's third and 11. Carsanos trying to get away from pressure and closing in is Mesner. Number 60, Mark Mesner from behind tackles Carsanos at the 35-yard line. Receiver is covered. Every one of these receivers as they go down are covered. Carsados keeps looking, keeps looking for someone to be open. There's a man covering it, and of course, ultimately Mester. You can see here, every one of the receivers here are covered. Now it is fourth and 15. The ball is at the 35-yard line. State elects to go for the first down. They trail by 10. They need two scores. Carsados pulls out. Down the middle for Carter. He's got a touchdown. Ohio State. It was fourth and 15. And Carsados goes 36 yards where Carter makes a circus catch. attempt the extra point. Ohio State trails by a field goal. Here it is from the end zone. Carsanis gets enough time to get the ball to Chris Carter. He steps up into the pocket. A beautiful throw. Watch Carter jump and get the ball. And he's in the end zone for a touchdown. A marvelous throw by Carsanis. Chris Carter, number two. He's out of Middletown, Ohio. He's a six foot three inch sophomore with a world of athletic ability. His brother plays on the New York Knicks, but he never soared any higher here than Chris does for this Ohio State touchdown. Chris Carter, he breaks to the inside, goes all the way down, and watch him turn to the inside. Carsados was the key here, he had enough time. Now watch him go up. And out jump the defender, who is Doug Mallory. And that is 16 career touchdowns by Carter, only a sophomore. He has tied the Buckeye record. We'll be right back. There he is, one of the finest young athletes in the Big Ten, Chris Carter. And on fourth and 15, he has given the Buckeyes fresh life here in Ann Arbor. Um, Watch him slip past Akers, and now he is picked up by Mallory, number eight. And it is simply Carter going up higher than Mallory, pulling the ball down and getting into the end zone. It's a three-point difference right now with 10 minutes and 10 seconds to go, Coach. And also, that 17 points on the board by the Buckeyes represents more points than any other team on Michigan's schedule. Carsados with the fourth down play that paid off. Starting his first Michigan game. Isn't that amazing? We've got two quarterbacks here, Harbaugh and Carsados, and neither of them had ever started that Ohio State-Michigan game. Spangler. There is John Kolasar awaiting the kickoff. into the end zone. It'll come out as a touchback. Jamie Morris. 
Davis fielding it in the end zone. And of course, our excitement just starting in tomorrow, 12.30 Eastern time. We'll hear from Roger Slaback, Joe Theismann on his injury, how he's coming along. And of course, Bear Mania, the city of Chicago. I know right now the city of Chicago is watching this one wind down. They are very close, especially to the Michigan Wolverines. An awful lot of their talent through the years has come out of that Chicago area. And a doubleheader game tomorrow. Philadelphia against Dallas. Like you, I'm interested in whether or not the Cowboys can come back after that embarrassment. Here it is, Michigan. Ten minutes and ten seconds to go. First and ten. And they run off right tackle. Gerald White, the tailback, and Ray Holloman met him. And Eric, can you hear those pads slapping and that mic we've got down on the field? There's a little hitting going on, but Ohio State's taking some chances here to shut that running game down. They guessed it was going to be a run. Both linebackers fired in there, and they kept that from being any kind of a big gainer. Now, they have substituted Jamie Morris, and they have taken White out. And let's try to give you an idea of the intensity down there on second and seven. Rover on the blitz. He's open. Colasar. He'll go the distance. They won't catch him. Michigan history. 77 yards. Harbaugh to Colasar, the freshman. The longest, that was Leach to Jim Smith. 1975. 83 yards with that one. Now it'll be Moons kicking off. Ross and Workman are set deep for the Buckeyes. They've got 9-19 to work with. Workman at the three. Short of the 20-yard line, that specialty team of the Wolverines swarms all over him. Doug Mallory, Ivan Hicks, both of them out there. Here's another look at it. This came so close to being a sack. Number seven, right there, almost gets to Harbaugh. The difference between a 10-yard loss and a 77-yard gain, as you see Kolasar gather the ball in. Well, they gambled and lost. Sonny Gordon came blitzing, leaving Colasar with all that speed one-on-one. -on -one. Carsano's turn. To Byers. Byers battling his way to the 26-yard line with those two splendid inside linebackers, Mallory and Moeller, gang up on him. And the clock runs down inside of nine minutes. 27-17, Michigan over Ohio State. Byers certainly is into this one, isn't he? Tiger bringing 
making the play. No, that is Harris who actually had the play. Taggart entered the game with him, and the Buckeyes hoping some unity will help them out. Dropping toward Taggart, almost intercepted. Andy Moeller had it in his hands and couldn't hold on. Looked like Karsadis was hurt there for a minute, but I guess he's all right. Take a look at the nose guard, Harris, in this situation. Carsados off the play fake, pulls back out. Now Harris had dropped out, and he deflected the ball. And Moeller dove for it, had it for an instance, but it would have been a great catch. You can't blame yourself over that one. Great defensive effort. Right there. Almost had it. Third and two. Split backs. Buckeyes need a first down. Carsados off the bootleg, still moving out beyond the 40, and he is finally tackled down there by Hicks. And getting up slowly that time was Byers, coach. Yeah, he laid on the ground there a considerable amount of time. I wasn't sure whether it was Keith or not. I could not see his number, but he seems to be okay. Coming back into that huddle. 19 left. That was a great bootleg by Carsadis. It fooled the Wolverines completely. No one was there. He found leverage at that corner there and picked up the first down, and it was a big one. Tony Gant, number 14, is in at the other safety, and Mallory is out. So Gant and Hicks are now the safeties. First and 10 for the Buckeyes. Under pressure, incomplete. Heavy pressure that time by Mesner. Let's go down to Pat O'Brien. Pat? Right, you know, it's a little impossible to explain to you how loud this place is down here on the field. But let me tell you how big this stadium is. Last June, a guy named Jim Purell decided for a charity stunt to sit in every single seat. Brent, it took him four days, Sunday to Thursday. I don't know where he is today, but I guarantee you he's standing up. Let's go back to Brent. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Sados with a second and ten for the Buckeyes. Here's Big Cooper. And he busts out to the 47-yard line. Mallory meeting him there. Clock ticking down to 7.45. Michigan leading by 10, 27 to 17. Now the nose guard. Harris is replaced by McIntyre, and when McIntyre has come in, they've dropped him off the nose in the pass coverage. This is third and about six. Off a play fake, penalty marker is down. Parsados will keep it. He runs for what would be a first down, but there is a penalty flag thrown in the general direction of where they call holding against the offensive line. Looked like it might have been Cotterman, number 72 there. It'll be 10 yards. See if I can pick it up here at ground level. Watch number 66 right here, Hammerstein. That's who it is right there, the right arm, Cotterman, number 72. That's who it is right here. Oh, he's really holding. Era, that's uh, not holding, that's choking. <laughs> well, with the liberalized rule we have on yeah, wait a today. Minute. How liberal? <laughs> Depends on what side of the field you're on. So coming up next, our college basketball preview. Billy Packer will be taking a look at which teams to watch for. And then, of course, next week, Georgia Tech and Michigan will tip it off on CBS. Right now, it's third and 15. Marsados, under pressure, fumble. Michigan signaling that they have it. The officials are unpiling them. It goes. To Michigan. They have recovered. The Wolverines have recovered this fumble. And 
And that is Mike Mallory, number 42, getting up with the ball. Have you ever seen a more enthusiastic defensive group of guys? They've been unbelievable this year. You see, Carsonis will try to come up the middle after he's getting pressure, and he drops the ball. Right there, he loses it. He tries to gather it up. He cannot. And Mallory falls on it, and the Wolverines have the ball at the 33-yard line. And so what a difference that turnover ratio has been as it catches up with the Buckeyes down the stretch. Here is Perriman pounding off the right tackle as the Michigan staff will now go to work on that clock. They lead it by 10. It is run down inside of 645. There's a player shaken up on the Ohio State side. A couple of the trainers dashed out onto the field, and Byron Lee is being helped off. Derek Eisenman checks back in. It's a 10-point lead by the Wolverines. And of course, Michigan win or lose is headed for the Fiesta Bowl. And Ohio State needs a rally to get to the Cotton Bowl. But right now, Pat Dye and the Auburn Eagles are looking strong, aren't they? Second and nine. Here comes White, the tailback. He's got a seam, and he gets across the 20-yard line. Boy, he really had good daylight here. Put yourself in number 22, Gerald White's position. Watch the daylight for you. Real per Perriman, number 37, leading and getting a block. Great hole there. Great blocking by the Wolverines. White has carried 21 times for 82 yards. This Michigan team has lost one game by two points. They were tied by Illinois, 3-3 in the other. Here is White, going to set sail outside, but he's surrounded. No hole there. And Harbaugh looking back over at the Michigan sideline. So here in Ann Arbor, we have 5.29 to go. Michigan leads Ohio State 27 to 17. The Buckeyes have closed to within three. State called the safety blitz and off the fake. Pulling out was Jimmy Harbaugh, his freshman flanker, John Colasar, beat his man in single coverage and raced into the end zone. A 77 yard touchdown. And the Wolverines have regained the lead by 10. And now White, looking for a hole, brought down at the 18 yard line. Chris Spielman and Sonny Gordon surround him. And the Buckeye offense can only hope for a big break now with 4.45 to go and a 10-point difference. You know, you know, I was going to say, Brent, that uh, Jerry Hanlon is the quarterback coach, and he's got to be awful proud of Jimmy Harbaugh's performance today. And I'd like to wish happy birthday to Jerry's mother. Jerry played for me football at Miami. She's 92 years old this month. Oh, isn't that nice? Happy great birthday. Football. Yeah, and a great football follower. Third down. That was White. And Ritter slammed him to the ground at about the 24-yard line. So here comes Pat Moons. Carsados would love to take over with a 10-point deficit rather than a 13. Now Moons has hit field goals of 34 and 38. He has replaced the suspended Mike Gillette. Two of two. This one for breathing room. Missing. 336. And a breath of life for Ohio State era. 
Well, they need two scores to get back in. There's 336, as you pointed out. That's plenty of time, but they've got to hit some big plays. Carsadas demonstrated on the one touchdown drive that they had. They started about their own 20-yard line and took it down the field for the... And Chris Carter caught that touchdown pass, so they're going to have, have to hit those kind of plays on these two drives if they're going to try to pull it out. Friday and Saturday, our college coverage continuing on CBS. 2.30 Eastern time, Virginia, Maryland on Friday. 3.30 Saturday, it's Notre Dame against Miami. Here's first and ten. Receivers were again covered. Carsados has Carter, who is coming back to that side, and he is out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Great scrambling by Carsados. I thought he was down. But he regained his balance and threw a great strike to Chris Carter, who kept working in the direction that Carsadas was working. Watch here as he's flushed out to his left. Now he goes, he almost goes down, maintains his balance, and fires a great pass there to Chris Carter, number two, who's finally run out of bounds there. Carter with five catches for 90 yards. That one for 24 yards. And a first down at the 46. 325. And here's Keith Byers. Stretched and out of bounds by the defense, Jim Scarcelli. Let's get an update now from Jim Nance of New York. Jim? Brent, how about Lorenzo White of Michigan State? He has his Spartans in front on his 219-yard rushing performance, breaks the Big, uh, Big Ten single-season rushing mark set last year by Keith Byers. He also beats Herschel Walker's sophomore season record that was set back in 1981. 1,904 yards rushing on the season. Let's go back to Brent and Aaron. All right, Jim, what a great year Lorenzo is in. Color M, Heisman Trophy candidate next year. Carsados under pressure, throws it to Byers. Byers spins at the 50. And got to the 46-yard line. The clock, the most important thing in the game right now. And that's the kind of weather we're enjoying here on a November Saturday. <laughs> Take a look at the bowl picture coming up on our post game report here on CBS. Third and two. Carsados with time pressure from behind throws incomplete. Lanise was out of bounds. Brad Cochran had coverage for the Wolverines. And they have come down now to another fourth down situation. It was fourth and 15 when Carsados hit Carter for the Buckeyes' second touchdown. Lanise did everything he possibly could to keep his feet in, but he didn't have possession of the ball. Watch here. Watch him try to keep those feet in. There's the ball. And his right foot must be touching the line, or his left foot be touching the line. Left foot touching the line. Good call by the official, and he's right on top of it. We've got a timeout here in Ann Arbor. We'll be right back for the final 2.30. Michigan with a 10-point lead. Time running out on Ohio State as far as the Cotton Bowl is concerned. They need a comeback here against the Wolverines. Meanwhile, Auburn closing in on a trip to Dallas and a New Year's Day game. Auburn, of course, would take on the winner of the Southwest Conference. Texas knocking off Baylor today, so it has come down to the Texas-Texas A&M game on Thanksgiving night. And there are another fourth down for Jim Carasados and the Buckeyes. Well, they've got a yard and a half. I wondered whether or not on that third down play they should have gotten it then and ensure four more downs because there's two and a half minutes. They're taking a risk here. They could be stopped and have to surrender the ball. This is a big down. Carasados is changing something. And a throw. Under pressure from Scarcelli. Ball is loose. He was surrounded at the 45-yard line. Michigan will take over. Jimmy Scarcelli, number 85, leading the assault. Total frustration. That's what this season has been for Keith Byers. I think if you had, I think 
if Earl Bruce had it to do over again, he would have picked up the first down on third down. That's what I thought they were going to do. Ensure the four more downs. But they had elected to pass it both times. And, of course, you can see what's happened. You've got to take your hat off to Bill Schenbeckler and the entire staff. They've done a remarkable job this year after, you know, having a very difficult year last year. His worst season ever. And the only person who liked him in the top 20 this year was one Errol Parsegan. Oh, I'm glad you remembered. <laughs> Cheryl White with a hole, getting through for a first down to the 33. A 12-yard burst. And William White finally tackling him. On the day, number four, Jim Harbaugh is 16 of 19 for 231 yards and three touchdowns. And Bo Schembechler has brought the Michigan program right back to the top. They have lost to Iowa 12 to 10. They have been tied by Illinois 3 to 3. And since that Illinois game, Harbaugh has really had a hot hand. Blitz, they pitch to White. Inside the 30. And he's ridden down by Pepper Johnson. You and I established one record today. We did not credit Pepper Rogers with one tackle. <laughs> you got a letter from the old coach. What did he say? <laughs> he said, he says, who said I wouldn't hit? He says, I was credited for four tackles, and I wasn't even there. <laughs> I was determined that it would be Pepper Johnson all day long. <laughs> now we want to thank some people who helped bring you this game this afternoon. Our executive producer, Kevin O'Malley, who is in Ann Arbor. Rick Lasavita, who produced this game despite that Harvard sweater. And, of course, directed by Big Joe Assetti. Great pictures, Joe, by you and the entire staff. Scott Johnson, the associate producer. Sandy Bell, who was our technical manager, and Big Artie Kipner. He kept us on the air, thanks to everybody else, especially the cameramen, who all year long have given us those spectacular pictures of college football at its best. What a year it's been, men. And, of course, many of this crew will be with us next week. Saturday, Errol and I will be in the Orange Bowl, Miami and Notre Dame. It's amazing how early the crew has to set up down in Miami. You can't believe how much time it takes to set up the Orange Bowl. Pretty bright fellas. Second and one. Harbaugh looking at the defense. Here come with Perriman for the first down. And the clock is running down on the Buckeyes. So a season that just a few weeks ago showed so much promise for Ohio State is now slipping away. An upset at the hands of Wisconsin. Domination by Michigan here this afternoon. And Earl Bruce must go back now and face some angry fans in Columbus. And of course, last year, Bo Schembechler and Michigan, they were dominated by Bruce and Ohio State. But he seldom loses twice in a row. Oh, I think Woody Hayes got him twice in a row. Hayden Fry did, this year being the second. Here is White, who had moved to fullback. He steps inside the 15-yard line before Holloman hauls him down at the one-minute mark. You know, Earl Bruce came into this season, had to rebuild his entire offensive line. He had a new quarterback that hadn't played a whole lot. He lost Byers, a very principal player. He's come back to play in this game. And I still think, under the circumstances, they've had a pretty good season. But unfortunately, the last... The Wisconsin game really had to take something out of them last week. And a post-game show is coming up, of course. We will finalize the Cotton Bowl story. Pat Dye and the Auburn Eagles. And getting ready for Dallas. Bo Jackson and his Heisman Trophy. And the Wolverines are not finished yet as Gerald White slams inside the five-yard line. Johnson and Rogan bringing him down. But you can talk all you want about the bowl games. When Michigan plays Ohio State, that's the big one for these two schools. And White has had a great afternoon. 28 carries for 113 yards. You have to be thinking about the 
seniors right now on these two teams. Working for four years, and it comes down to these final moments. And there was Kolick slamming White, and the fans come onto the field here in Ann Arbor. Michigan has beaten Ohio State. The war will wait for another year. Watching the final play. It's over. Schembechler and the Wolverines have beaten Ohio State. Just another day in the office as Alex Agassi comes over and congratulates Bo Schembechler. And our Chevrolet players of this game from Ohio State linebacker Chris Spielman, from Michigan quarterback Jim Harbaugh. And a check in the amount of $1,000 donated by Chevrolet to each college's general scholarship fund. Let's go down on the field to Pat O'Brien. Pat? All right, thank you, Brent. You're about to lose another goalpost here, Bo. What do you want to talk about first, your offense or defense? Well, I, our team has played well all year long, Pat. We've been very proud of this Michigan team. Um, they come to play every week. I can't say enough about them. It's been a great year coaching for me, and it's been a great year for 1985 for Michigan. What is it with this team? I've seen you quoted saying this team is very special to you. It is because I, every single one of these guys have um, done everything they could to come back from that uh, dismal season of a year ago, and we did it. Maybe we didn't win the title, but there are not too many teams better than us in the country. Jim Harborough had a great hot arm today, didn't he? Well, he's, he's had that right along. Uh, he's going to be a great quarterback, and uh, he was great today. What do you mean, going to be a great quarterback? <laughs> well, he's coming back next year, so we'll... All right, let's get, Bull, let's get Bull back to safety, back to breath. All right, Pat. Thank you, and again, congratulations to Bo Schembechler and his entire staff. Let's go to New York and Jim Nance. Jim? All right, thank you very much, Brent. And again, Michigan just just that close to possibly being a national championship team this year. Pat. Well, you know, they weren't highly regarded coming into the year, but they've been spectacular. That defense has been great, and I think it's Bo Schimmecker's best coaching job ever. And they still will be playing in the January 1st Bowl, the Fiesta Bowl. In just a couple of minutes, we'll give you all the scores and the latest bowl situation. But right now, let's go back to Ann Arbor for some more post-game comments. Brent? All right, Jim, thank you. So we will have some final thoughts on the scene here in Ann Arbor. But right now, we'll return after these messages from your local stations. Ten points, Michigan wins, and Era, some final thoughts on a great game. Well, coming into the ball game, Brent, as you know, we talked about it. They were pretty well evenly matched offensively with good skilled positions. But the difference was in the defense, and what happened in this football game,